guys welcome back to the channel so we are going to be resuming my series on rebuilding my war game collection uh, I think the last video we looked at RAF and uh, I believe we looked at a few other games kind of around that period so this uh, this episode or this video I am going to look at some more games and I think the only thing these games all have in common other than flight leader uh, is the boxes that they are in you know these games are all were all issued in these kind of uh, I don't know what you would call them they're more square boxes than than rectangle and they're they're not kind of your bookshelf size they're I'd say these are maybe 14 by 16 but uh, so I'm going to look at these. I think I have, well I know I have, I have Fifth Frontier War by Game Designers Workshop. But you don't really hear a lot about them anymore. Uh, I have Battles and Leaders by Yaquinto. Okay, so Yaquinto has made, has, has made the board. I have War at Sea by Avalon Hill. I have Blitzkrieg, which I don't even know if I've even opened this by Avalon Hill. This is heavy, so I might have some extra stuff in that one. And then, of course, I have Flight Leader by Avalon Hill. This this game has actually a very, very cool-looking cover. Kind of, you're right up in the guy's uh, heads-up display. It's just the terrain that you fly over. But, so we're going to do all that, and... Uh, kind of discuss these so let's get started okay so I'm going to start with the last one I showed you guys which is Blitzkrieg mainly because I am curious as to why this box is so heavy uh, I do know I won this in an auction I don't remember how much I paid for it it's not a great copy you know, I, I, I judge games by either one, they're a collector's copy, or two, they're a player's copy. So this would be a player's copy. You know, it's got the old tape and stuff like that. The box is kind of warped, like maybe it was under some moisture, not necessarily got wet. Uh, playing time, three hours. Complexity rating is six. Advanced game is a seven or ten. Uh, you can see we have the unique designation counter, so there's going to be your squares, your X's, and your O's. Wow, now actually, this might actually be a collector's copy with a player inside a player's box. So we have another catalog. This is Avalon Hill, so this one is nice. I've actually been pulling these out. Because I am going to do one video where we look at all the catalogs that came and maybe look at what changed or what games were added over the years. So if you have been really interested in kind of knowing if you're missing an Avalon Hill game, stay tuned for that video. So we're going to put this to the side. This is the rule book. This is nice too. This does not look like it has any damage in it. They even illustrate a hand moving your chit across the board. So that is cool. Now it says it has a basic game, basic game optional rules, and then it has an advanced game. So basically the basic game is six pages. And then you go into optional rules. It has tournament games, which I would love for somebody to do a Blitzkrieg tournament nowadays. Uh, I don't know if they do that at the board games championships, which they used to do in uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania. I don't know if they still do that. But you have barrage and bombing table, air combat table, minor city reduction table. So there's a lot of tables which kind of give you a feel for what's possible. But look at this counter sheet. So these are practically untouched. Now, like I told you guys before, you can see that this says the red order of battle has kind of fallen out. But you might could just press those counters back in there just to make sure you got them all some of these are loose so i am going to grab a baggie i always try to keep a baggie on hand when i open these after i buy them so i can immediately get these counters in here because 
If you wait too long, you will lose a piece. You know, one day you're pulling the board out, and next thing you know, the piece goes flying, and you never see it again. So this is the first part of the board. Neutral territory. Big red units at sea. So this is kind of a cool board because it's actually, it has... It has a combination of plain areas and a combination of uh, terrain features. These are your orders of appearance, which I do like games like that. I like games where units are fed into the game. I'm trying to remember. I used to play a game like that. It was a mini game. It might have been... Uh, Revolt on Antares. I have some videos of me playing that. That is a fun game. And I like to play it solo. But part of it, you have units that come in on appearance at certain times and where they're at. Like reinforcements. So this is your tournament game attrition table. Your Blitzkrieg time record. So this is another map portion. Kind of the opposite side of what we saw. And again, these are in nice shape. There is no warping on these maps. So that is good. Actually, that is great. And then this is another portion. And this appears to be one map. So there's not, it doesn't pick up anywhere. This is just one contained map. Great Koufax Desert. Nelson River, Lake Penske. So I'm not sure what area that represents. So we will get that out. We have our blue chit counter. Half of it, I'd say maybe two thirds of it is still unpunched. Which is lovely. An advertisement for the general. A card to mail in. It's funny, I, if you Google this address in Google Maps, <laughs> You will be shocked at the building that they actually worked out of. I when I when I try when I saw that building, I couldn't believe that the mighty Avalon Hill was in that building. Although I'm sure it's changed over the years, and you really can't see the whole facade. You can only kind of see the back entrance. But just do that sometime if you're curious. So unlike the advertising catalog, this is actually the ordering catalog. So you can look in here and see what, what things were selling for if you wanted to order them. You could check them off and see what they cost at the time. Uh, and there seems to be some chips in here. So chips. And that's all you wore. What is this? I got to check. <laughs> Non-negotiable. So I can actually see who this game belonged to. Although I'm not going to, although it's a P.O. box, so I guess I don't, I didn't want to show nobody their address. But this individual got a credit uh, of nine, $9 credit, says it's non-negotiable, but that they could apply toward a future purchase of any Avalon Hill product. So gonna put that over there that's kind of a nice keepsake i never got those like i never knew they issued that now this probably might be one of the original dies you would have got or die and then these are the loose chits which there is a lot uh for there to be so many unpunched there's a lot of loose chits now i can't find my plastic bag uh Where'd that plastic bag go? Okay. Let's reverse. Let's back up and back up. I mean, uh, let's go in reverse order. I'm going to take this out before it falls out. And here we go. So I can get all of these in here. And at another date and time, I will I will see if I can fill in those empty uh, frames with these uh, with these. I wonder if some of these are the blank ones at the very bottom. So.
So that's what you get inside, as far as I know. I mean, like, and when I say as far as I know, I'm not, I'm assuming there's nothing missing inside, like another sheet or uh, maybe a counter tray. I don't know if this one came with a counter tray or not. Uh, okay. So we got them all in here. We're going to put this back in here. Oh, that's not going to lay flat. Put this back in here. And those back in there. And then we can close that up. But what I want to do before I do that is see what the... Uh, strategic or operational level of the game is uh, no they're talking about war games in general blitzkrieg uh, how once you know how to play blitzkrieg your next problem will probably be who to play with we can help with that problem and many others only through your subscription to our bi-monthly catalog in general so that's a plug for their catalog. It says there are two versions of Blitzkrieg, the basic game and the tournament game. The basic game is the simplest in order to serve as an introduction if you have never played a situation simulation game before, but also to serve as a fast paced action game. Yeah. So it really doesn't talk about the scope or the scale of the game as far as it relates to that period. It's just, hey, here's a game. Learn how to play it. <laughs> if you like it, you can get the tournament or get the general magazine. But I probably bought this game more out of uh, more out of nostalgia in the sense that I remember these games being around. Not that I ever had this one. But just more out of nostalgia. Sometimes I like to look at games like this or play games like this just to kind of get a feel for how they did games or how they made games back in that period. I don't even know what this is as far as this check goes. I don't know if I should keep this or not. Poor guy's name and every address and stuff. At least his P.O. box address is still in here. Although I never recognized these vouchers before, so I don't know. I might put it in there. Maybe, maybe there will be an Avalon Hill collector who says, "Hey, I will pay somebody if you can find me one of the vouchers they used to mail." All right. So that one, that is Blitzkrieg. All right. Next up is War at Sea. And this one, they tell you right on the box what the scope and scale of the game is. Now, you command the military forces in this classic game of naval strategy, War at Sea, designed to introduce newcomers to the fastest growing hobby today, simulation gaming. Here, your strategy alone determines the outcome of every game. War at Sea contains no chance cards, spinners, or random luck elements. Victory or defeat rests squarely on your shoulders. Who knows? You might have been a great commander if only you had been given a chance. Now, we give you that chance. No military experience necessary. All you need is common sense and a little bit of brains. Here's what you get. Now, anywhere I, I did emphasis was because they had big capital letters. So that's where I put the emphasis when I was reading. Nice big ad on there. I mean, they really hit you right off the bat. And so we got counters. These are actually nice counters where you can see the vessels and their relative uh, stats. Pretty simple catalog, or I mean, in rule book, rule, rule sheet. Object to play, the playing pieces. So it shows you the ships. Land-based airstrikes. Example of play. So remember I told you guys in the old days there was no YouTube, but they would put an example of play in the book. The scene is the Baron C. The German player is making an all-out effort to sink 
the Allied Convoy. Oh, he's got some planes in here. And he's got subs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks interesting. And then we have a board. Uh... So now I'm assuming is this the whole board? Just these two board pieces. POC chart axis victory. That's weird. It looks like there's more information on this board than space than space to play. I mean you got this USA map here. You got this big old kind of ruler running through the middle of it, and then you got this big old turn chart. Like, where do you play at? Where's your playing space? I wonder if I'm missing a board. So there's no catalog in here. And this is, looks like somebody's old, what is, what is this, a timesheet? Isn't this like an old timesheet, or was this a test? A test card, like an SAT <laughs> test. I remember, this is like, these were old computers. You may not realize this, but this is how you used to put programs into a computer or have a computer run something. You color this stuff in and jam it in there. That's getting tossed. But let me see here what it says the components are. Because I wonder if I'm missing a map. Uh... Let me see. I got counters, although I don't have any sprues. So I don't know if they're complete. And I got like four dice in there, which I doubt if this came with four dice. It says you get a full color terrain map of the European theater during World War II. Mounted on a stiff board that won't wrinkle, crumble, buckle, or smear. Military, quote, chess pieces, end quote, representing World War II naval and air force units. Varnished for durability, they called it varnished. Rules of play, written specifically to make learning the game truly an effortlessly, effortlessly task. Make the switch from traditional games to simulation games. Start with War at Sea, then later dig into the more sophisticated simulation games, also published by Avalon Hill. So that is all you got. That little bitty board. Which, I don't even know where your ships would go. I mean, there's nothing to navigate. You're going to get into battle real quick. What is the setup? Movement, combat, engaging, disengaging. There's no scenarios. And it doesn't ever tell you where's the setup. Like, you know, there's no page where it says setup. You know, how to start setting it up. It just says the map board. It says the green sections of the map board are allied ports. The red are axis. France does not become an active port until turn two. Leningrad and Russia do not become active ports until turn three. Control of a sea area goes to the side which has one or more surface vessels remaining in that area at the end of the turn. Only one side may have surface vessels remaining in that area at the end of combat. The Allies do not control any sea area which contains a U-boat at the end of combat. So, I mean, it doesn't even say prepare for play. So I imagine that's the setup. Remove and sort the chip counters by nationality and place name reinforcements in the proper box of the turn chart printed at the bottom of the map board. Ships designated as reinforcements are easily distinguishable by the line which underscores their name. Place all other ships in their respective ports. British ships may start the game in England or Malta, but British re reinforcements must start in England. Sequence of play. Both players consult the turn chart and place any reinforcements in their respective ports. The allied player moves his ships and repairs those damaged ships which he has not moved. The Axis player moves his ships, places U-boats, 
and repairs those damaged ships which he has not moved. Any control flags on the board from previous turns are removed at this time. Both players simultaneously place their land-based airstrike markers. Both players resolve combat one sea area at a time. The allied player conducts all anti-submarine warfare attacks. Any surviving non-disabled U-boats may then attack in return. So I guess you literally can go straight down. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do one of these games on the channel because that's that's about as straightforward as you can get. They don't even bother to to give you any scenarios. You just kind of start pushing your ships across the board at each other in one little board. So that is War at Sea. Now, I tell you what, I've seen some copies that is getting a little bit high. Uh Usually if they're unpunched. But having seen what you just saw, this is a very basic game. So be careful if you're trying to pick a copy up. Don't get lured into bidding, you know, more than it's worth. Not at least not this version. I don't I don't know about other versions. Okay, so now we are looking at battles and leaders by Yaquinto, which I am familiar with some of your Quintos games, but not many of their war, 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 war games. And when I say war, war games, I'm specifically excluding a lot of the games they did. Like, I know they had one was, was like a little pirate game where you moved around. It's called, I think it was called Swashbuckler, as a matter of fact. Uh which you could call a war game. So that's when I said I'm not familiar with their war war games as opposed to some of their other ones. They they even had a uh, sci-fi version of Swashbuckler. I mean, literally, you'd had pieces for, like, tables that you could stand on and things like that. But this is a tactical-level combat in the American Civil War. See what they have on the box. Just very basic box. Uh, geomorphic map board, realistic morale rules, movable terrain, units of different shapes and sizes. The game includes three 21 by 9 map board sections, over 500 extra thick die cut counters, a complete rule book with scenarios, various game table cards, two dice, and a sturdy compartmented plastic tray for unit counter storage and sorting. Number of players, two to four. Playing time, one to three hours. Level three. So they, they even did a little level thing for you. So this obviously depicts the American Civil War. These must be the three map boards, which... <laughs> what did they call these things again? I thought they said mounted. Did they say mounted or thick and sturdy? What is it? Three geomorphic map board sections. So, okay. Somehow I must have read into that that they were mounted or they were sturdy. So basically, these are your map board sections. Which are just, you know, probably 100, 120 pound, you know, cardboard paper. These are your map board sections. Although for all the years, they've held up pretty good. So I guess I can't complain. This is your rule book. Uh, a lot of rules. Set up and preparation for play. I do like that that is headed that way. Game procedure. Line of sight. Oh, they have line of sight rules in here. Regimental integrity, combat unit attitudes, casualty. They did say this was level three. Melee, grade, the range table, charisma level, change table, leader hit table. Now, this is a game you could play with miniatures. I'm just going to tell you that right now. If they're talking about line of sight and morale and all this other stuff, you might as well drop out, drop your miniatures down on here if you're going to spend that kind of time. So if you are looking for a game and wondering, like, you know, what kind of game could I drop some miniatures in and play it? This seems like one you could do that with. All right, so this is their album, Dallas. I saw a copy of this game recently. I was actually thinking of getting it, but 
because I remember. So that swashbuckler, which I told you guys about. Some of these I do not remember. Beachhead. I think I remember Hero. Attack of the Mutants, I never saw that. Barbarians, I never saw that. Asteroid Pirates, Demons Run, Roaring Twenties, Neck and Neck. Adventurer, that is the sci-fi version of uh, Swashbuckler. Superiority, I never saw that. Fall of South Vietnam, I didn't see that. Apache. Uh, Apache, I don't know. I think I did see Apache. And they got some more on the back. So we're going to put that in our catalog episode. These are your fire and casualty tables. Which again, this looks more like something from Johnny Rapp. Or some kind of miniature game like that. Firing modifier. Elite unit plus two. Firing at skirmish units minus two. <laughs> so basically a skirmish unit cancels out the benefit of being an elite unit. Wow. Uh, sniping at an officer min minus four. Firing into full flank plus three. Some more tables on the back. And he's got extra sheets for other players. Extra sheets for other players. Oh, wow. Look at this. I'm telling you guys, this is pretty much a miniature game. They even have pop-out terrain. So you can populate the board with the pop-out terrain. I don't even know. These even might be bullets. <laughs> I don't think they're bullets, but I don't know what they are. But look at the look at the counters. They even got the, the little figures like I like. So you got the mounted guys. This must be a commander. Uh or maybe that's a commander. Uh you you put what they're gonna do, charge, what what uh formation they're in, route routed or column. Oh man, they even have little buildings. Now, this is what I used to love about your Quinto. <laughs> the your Quinto guys were like me, man. They liked to feel like they were playing with toys when they when they made their games. Right? This is like, why bother if it doesn't feel like you're playing with toys? So, they've got the little general there and then the little foot guys. And they have their numbers on there, which I'm not sure if the numbers are just their numbers as in their strength or just the number of the counter or what uh these are some individuals so maybe you can break out the units when they're depleted you got flags and this is unpunched by the way if you haven't noticed nice clean counters totally unpunched so this is nice this is nice you get a little counter tray which i'm assuming there's no there's no lid to this, so this is kind of useless because if you put your counters in here and, you know, put your box up on the shelf, all of them are going to fall out. So I'm not sure if there used to be a lid. Probably. But then knowing your Quinto, maybe not. But that is all you get. Where's your dice? I don't even know. Did it say you get dice? Or is it just resolved? I wonder if this game has no dice. Map board, morale, terrain. Die cut counters, rule book. Various game table card. Two dice. So yeah, it's missing the dice. But I'm going to put away their uh, little catalog. I showed you guys a sneak peek of it. But we will look at that a little bit more in depth. I wonder if GDW has a catalog in theirs. Battles and Leaders. I think I've actually heard that this is actually a, a, a good game. Uh, allows players to recreate brigade size engagements of the American Civil War. Accurate and playable rules cover the important aspects of combat, such as formations, charges, melee routes, leadership, sharpshooters, morale, and the quality of individual regiments and more. The game takes into account over 20 different weapons types, ranging from the standard rifle musket and the 12 pound Napoleon field piece to the breech loading Whitworth rifle. Wow. 
very, very interesting. I'm telling you, you could adapt this into a miniature game. Next up is Fifth Frontier War. Now, I'm not, not sure if we're going to get to one more. It's about 30 minutes in. So, hopefully, I might say Flight Leader for the next one. But this is, uh, it says, For Use With Traveler. So that's the first thing that should get your attention if you guys remember the old Traveler role-playing game. Battles for the Spinward Marches. I like how back in the day they would just take a friggin' fighter jet and put it in space. I mean, that looked cool as a mug, but it looks sort of just like nothing but a fighter jet. Game Designers Workshop. Fifth Frontier War. So basically, this is a set in the world of Traveler. Poised just beyond the frontier of the Imperium stand the war fleets of the Z Zodoni Consulate. Four times in the last 500 years, they have attacked in campaigns to wrest control of the vital resources and rich worlds of the Spinward Marches from the Third Imperium. Now they strike again, and the Fifth Frontier War begins in earnest. Fifth Frontier War is a traveler campaign game portraying the progress of of a far-reaching interstellar war and its effect on the many worlds that are its battlefield. The game is playable independently as a tense, fast-moving simulation of interstellar war. Roots cover starship squadrons and space battles, troop units, and worlds at war, and the details of long-range interstellar planning. Special rules cover the operation of ship fleets, the use of naval bases, troop carriers, and advanced technological levels. Special charge cover every aspect of combat during the game. So I do like all of that. What I don't like is this very boring stark black board. I mean, wow. For all of that to be taking place in this thing, I mean, I'm sure it's supposed to be the depth of space, but man, put a color planet on there. <laughs> so it says this is intermediate level, you know, introductory, basic, intermediate, advanced, or master. So... Intermediate is fair. I don't, I mean, I, that's kind of what I would consider myself. So this copy is punched and bagged. It's like it's pretty nice, nicely bagged and sorted. They didn't just throw them all in one bag. You have the red versus blue. And then you have your kind of marker or designation chits. You have your rule book, which is actually in nice shape. I love it when the rule books are nice in nice shape. I can't stand nasty, chewed up rule books. So it is about, looks like it's about 16 pages of rules. Then you get into the optional rules, which I would say is intermediate. And then they said there's some role playing in here. Uh... Some little tables and examples. So it looks like this game borrows something from the role-playing community as well as from the wargaming community. Man, look at this map. I don't even know what these are. Monir. Those must be planets, I'm assuming. Because it looks like they have all of the characteristics of a planet. So the symbols and stuff. Although I will say the board looks better in person on this map than it looked... <laughs> On the box. I don't know what section of the map they were showing on the box. But see, there is some color in here. And the planets are colored. So maybe they went back after they did it and decided to color this. Because what they had on the box, just I was like, man, that looks totally stark and uninteresting. But this looks interesting. You got the names. You got the different sections of the, of the uh, galaxy, I'm assuming. Or... Yeah, it wouldn't be the universe, but galaxy. And somebody here has all of his calculations as to what what fleets will be moving into what sectors. Wow. So here's his his thing. It says space. To total all attached factors, one die row for each 48. Loss equals to defense factor. Enter. So these are his notes. Space surface transfers no occur. Well, that's pretty cool. I don't need that. <laughs> I just refer to the rule book, but he obviously didn't want to mess up his rule book. So there's a little errata card. I'm going to see if they have a catalog in here. So 
So I do not see a GDW catalog, fleet chart, uh, kind of your tables, order of battle, and the other fleet chart. So I was hoping I'd see that. GDW. Again, looks like there's no die in here. The dice do not survive. That's why I'm always pleased when I see one that looks like an original one. Uh, so then this is kind of cool. It's kind of a timeline of events. Regina 2314 and all that star date. And it gives you like a little timeline of events leading up to the Fifth Frontier War. So I always like to read stuff like that. The counters, the ruse. Game components, the map. Oh, they go over each of the components in, in detail. So they don't just tell you what you get. They tell you what you get and then talk about it. They talk about the rule book, about the map. Two six-sided dice. So I always like to see what dice are needed when I have a game. So I know what I need to put in there. And they're not in here with the chips. And that is Fifth Frontier War. At least that is a look inside of Fifth Frontier War. So anything related to Traveler usually has my interest. So I, I definitely have some interest in at least peeking my toe into this and, you know, kind of finding out or getting an idea of the scope of the game. All right, so... I think we're at 36 minutes, so I'm going to call it here. The next time we get back, I will do, uh, I will start with Flight Leader. So there's a lot of stuff in here. And uh, I guess it deserves a little bit of time. But I will start with Flight Leader, and then we're going to get into some of the more modern uh, games that I got in my collection, or I'm starting to get. So I'll give you a peek of those, and then we'll get out of here. Okay, guys, so this is what will be coming up in the next version of Rebuilding My War Game Collection. The one I'm most excited about this, I just picked this up last week, War Stories Liberty Road. It is a solo game. Uh, it has big fat chits or uh, pieces, uh, but it is actually a solo game. Where it says, you are the commander issuing orders to infantry squads and armored fighting vehicles. So I am definitely looking forward to that. Most of you have probably heard of Sergeant's D-Day. I've got this in just earlier this year. Last Frontier, the Vesuvius Incident. Uh, I actually got this on a, in a trade on Board Game Geek. So I, I'm really interested. I think that's solo as well. Or can be solo. And then V Commandos. Which I also picked up. Matter of fact, I picked V Commandos and Liberty Road up on the same day. There was an expansion for V Commandos, but it was gone. It sold. But uh, I am interested in this game. This game reminds me of a game I saw online. I think this is one to four players too. So next, next, the next one you guys don't want to miss. Because we're going to be getting into some solo uh, war games and some of the more modern ones. All right, take care, guys. Thank you uh, to everybody that supported the channel, all the good feedback, all the participation. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.